Ben Horner for MBTV. Here with uh, Graham Everett talking about Friday Night at the Halls. Um, we'll start off with your two debutants, Ryan Frost and Alan Ratib. What did you make of their performances on the night? Yeah, done everything uh, you know you'd want from a uh, you'd want from uh, debutants. They both you know done well with ticket uh, you know sold tickets. Both turned up in tremendous condition. All credit to Russell Smith. Um, you know, you see that they had two very experienced, what should we say, tough journeymen. Both of them had a go on the night, so um, ticked some boxes there. So that's that's a little taster for them. You know, find out what professional boxing is all about. A little bit different, longer rounds, a little bit tougher, rougher. Um, Ryan Frost uh, got dropped. Alan Ratib got cut. Uh, but they both box very well, very well, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm pleased with, you know, I'm pleased with them too. It's good. Staying in the gym that they train at, uh, Joe Hearn, his opponents sort of come out flying, really. Um, and that's not something that you'd want to do with someone like Joe. Um, so it's a difficult one to talk about. It didn't last too long, or but do you feel Joe adapted well to that style of fighter coming flying out at him? Well, to be honest with you, it, it, it was just, uh, it was right up Joe Hearn's street, that was. There's, there's, there's everything we're, we're trying not to take out of Joe, but teach him the other, you know, teach him the box and stuff. Um, you know, me and Russ talking regularly about, about Joe, how, how good, how tough, how strong. But we both would like him to box a little bit more. But what can he do if someone tries to uh, take him out? Then, uh, as in his words, they better learn to punch a bit harder than that. But, you know. Job done. It was what it was. It got people talking. Um, I think Joe was a bit disappointed, but like I said, it's another win. He'll have plenty of wars along the way. Um, but, you know, it's another win, another camp done. Um, he's back in the gym. He'll be back here next Sunday for his uh, sparring. So, um, moving forward with Joe, all good. Something you've always said about Joe is, you know, quick progression and you're trying to move him on as quickly as you possibly can. Could we see Joe out again fairly soon, or is it an, is it a case of trying to get that bit more experience in the gym and going into another fight, more of a fighter, you know, rather than a powerhouse? Yeah, I mean, last last time he boxed, he had a, a, a good eight round fight, good learner. He, he did have a bad hand hand injury from that fight. This is why we, d you know, he just done a four rounder this time. Just check his hand was okay. Um, we're, we'll be looking to keep Joe very busy. We're looking to do a show in May in, in, in Essex. Um, and then we'll have him back in Norwich in July. Um, so, yeah, with Joe, obviously, when an opportunity comes for Joe, which it will do, um, I don't think there'll be any hesitation in putting him in there. You know, that's right for us, right for, you know, right for Russ, myself and Mervyn. That's, that's exactly what we'll do. Another one. Zafer Morris, um, got six rounds under his belt, and um, albeit six twos, if it was six threes, many people were saying that Zafer could have got his first stoppage in the professional ranks. What do you make of his performance as well? Because you're spending a bit more time with him now and seeing him grow a little bit more, you know. So, what did you make of that? He he's got my attention. Uh, Z has. I, I'm well impressed with him. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm well impressed with his um, his work rate. Uh, um, from top to bottom, you know, he's, he's 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 just keeping his head down. You don't hear much about him. He, he you know, he d he doesn't have too much to say in the gym. He works hard. There's plenty to say on social media where he sells his tickets, which is listen. He's doing his job there, but um, that's my job to to try and get him to improve. Between me, John, uh, Darren, and Mervin, that's you know, it's just moving forward with him. I, I'm really impressed with him, and and, and I think. I think when, when we get him a title fight and he wins, I think what a what a tremendous story he is, you know, from where he was and from where he's, you know, from where he's ended up. But he, he's one of them who's just pleased to be, you know, involved. He's loving life. Um, so you know, he's, he's sometimes you get attached to people, and he's, he's I've become more attached to him because he's, just, you know, as the saying goes, he's grown on me. I, I you know, I think. It's good to work with people like that. He's, he's, he, he respects everything you do. Um, great lad. Talking of titles, 
Billy Bird um, has come out in a newspaper like down his way that he'd like a southern area or a challenge belt or yeah. anything really. You know that next step for Billy. Um, is there any more news on that? And because we saw a bit more of the old Billy back in there in Norwich, he, he gritted yeah. on that gum shield and went for it. Yeah, Billy. Billy turned up. The the big thing he's got a nutritionist on on side again. Um, I think you can see that his body shape. He came in 11.7 on the day, which means he'd be comfortable at 11 stone the day before weigh-in um, for a championship fight. Billy, Billy now needs a good fight. Um, w all I can say is we're working very hard behind the scenes to get him a good fight. And next time he's out, we'll be in a, 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 a good fight, a very meaningful fight. Finally, um, Sam Sexton, a, a statement was made um, he stopped an opponent that many people in the heavyweight division have struggled with and mm. um, not stopped as quickly as what Sam did and Sam never looked in trouble at all so um, where do we see things going now for Sam um, is there possible opponents or anything lined up well obviously um, we'd, you know, we'd love to be in that British title mix um, but like I've, like I've said with Sam one of his, the biggest problems in his career all along was inactivity you can see in the three fights you've now watched Sam have um, the improvement, the improvement in his body shape, the improvement in his mentality. Uh, everything about him is, is, is moving forward. He looked really, really good the other night. He looked, say, um, back to the times when he fought Martin Rogan, you know, he's, he looked very sharp. His jab was, his, it was perfect. Um, I was really, really pleased with Sam and, and you know, he's back in the gym. His his whole team around him with you know Tasha and everyone they're, they're all you know his partner that's really helping him with his diet and everything so that all makes a big difference um, but I think I think with Sam it's just a matter of keeping him busy keeping him winning and the championship fights will come you know he's, he's a good fight he's off seven, seven unbeaten you know he's he's good he's getting noticed to, again. Um, he's a little bit of the forgotten man of the heavyweight scene, but you know, out of all these people they keep mentioning for a British title, apart from Dave Allen, he's the only one who's on a win and run. Yeah. You know, so he hopefully he's in the mix, and it will be third time lucky. Someone who it seems to be going on forever, and we keep bringing him up, Nathan Dale. He's finally back in train, full on training now, sparring and yeah. feeling that hand out. Um, we're hoping to see him back sort of sooner rather than later. Where do you see things going for Nathan this year? You know, the, it's going to be a little bit of feathering in and it's, it's going to take a little yeah. while to get him back in there. But yeah. where do you see things going for Nathan this year? Well, he, he needs to get in that title mix somewhere, um, which he will do. We need to maybe one, two quick runouts just to check that hand is good. It seems good. He's sparring a bit with 18 ounce gloves on. Um, he's letting the right hand go a little bit more each week, um, growing his confidence. It's like having a new hand, really. But uh, you know, his, his work ethics and everything have been absolutely fantastic. I can't wait to see Nathan back in there, and, uh, and he can't wait to be back in there. You know, he's he's in that mix. You know, we we need him in that in that light welterweight mix. Whatever uh, title comes up, we're, we'll be ready. You know, like I say, two fights back, and we're in the mix. Let's have someone fresh in that little. Mix, yeah. Mr. Hearn. We, you know, we need somebody, somebody a little bit different. Um, so we keep out that merry-go-round of of the of the light welters at the moment. Um, I see some fresh blood in there, and uh, Nathan's your man. I don't want to put names into the hat or anything, but something I uh, spotted yesterday was uh, Jack Catterall has mentioned that he wants to get a final eliminator for the British title. Um, if that phone rang, is that a fight that could happen? You know, in well, if they're, if they're looking for it now, obviously not. But but because um, he he needs, he you know he's been inactive for over a year. Inactivity is a is a killer, as I mentioned earlier. You know, all British fighters, if there has been a problem with them, they they're not fighting as much as they should do and as they used to do. Yeah. You know, people got regular runouts, a year and a half, a year and a half, uh, or over a year's act inactivity, straight in with a big fight and and. Now you mentioned Jack Catchell. I think he's the best out of all of them. Yeah. I think he is, you know. I think he's a tremendous fighter. Really, really like him. I do. I do like him. He's he's very strong, good puncher. Um, but Nathan wants to be the best, so he's got to go in with the best. 
but you know he is a light welter and um, we'll, we'll see what opportunities come Finally going on to someone who's not here unfortunately at the minute but he's away working hard Ryan Walsh um, the fight's now been announced for the James Tennyson um, what do you know of Tennyson and what do you expect him to bring? Um, he's obviously a good boxer because he's a very well accomplished amateur um, he's very big very strong very good puncher so we know he can fight two ways uh, but you know there's we're not going to worry too much about him we respect him and he's really got everybody's attention I mean Ryan will be running the mountain in Tenerife this morning that's that's what he does that's why he's out there conditioning himself getting everything ready we you know we'll, we'll, we'll be getting his sparring and everything sorted uh, very shortly as I'm working on that at the moment um, but yeah, listen, we expect a, a, a young, hungry, live opponent. It's, it's a great fight. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't need to sell itself. They're two good fighters. Um, I personally don't think James has worked in the calibre that uh, Ryan has as a professional. Um, and we'd like to think that his experience will see him through. But it's, it's a great fight. Um, you're seeing Ryan Walsh now come into his own as the best he should be. Uh, he's always been world class in my eyes, and he, he you know, he is. He's now sh he's now showing himself as world class. He lost, you know, he lost to Lee Selby, who is genuine, genuine world class, and he didn't lose by much. He lost through experience, really. But that's then. Um, you know, he's now in that position where he's getting a, he's getting some uh, regularity to his work, which I think is very important with him. You know, um, but yeah, Frank is keeping him busy. Um, so we, you know, we can't complain, and uh, and you you will see the best, best, best Ryan Walsh, um, that's for sure. Moving on to his brother, just injury sort of setting back a little bit again. Um, is there any more of an update on that and where Liam's at um, with his training? Or yeah, yeah, Liam, Liam's as you've seen, he's been sparring in this gym. He's, um, um, up until he's just gone out to Tenerife, uh, he's in he's in good shape. His hand is holding up. He's working very hard on his conditioning at the moment, um, running the mountain with Ryan, obviously. Um, but yeah, listen to what, what be it at light welter, be it at, uh, sorry, be it at lightweight, be it at super featherweight, whatever opportunity comes up, you know, he just needs probably just needs a quick run out to to make sure their their hand up, you know, because he had the knuckle operation, um, and then what, what be whatever it is, if it's a British title fight. If it's a world title fight, he'll be ready. You know, that's as simple as that. He'll be ready. Thank you very much for your time. Um, there we go. There's a roundup for boxing in Norwich. I mentioned to Mervyn, Mervyn Turner there because he, me and him have got no hair. And <laughs> trust me, <laughs> after after the you know the problems with the show pre pre show problems, we got it together. We done it again. Um, so well done to Mervyn. He's well respected for what he does down here. So coming to quite a, you know quite a figure in Norfolk now he's, he's quite quite a popular man brilliant thanks for your time Graham yeah, and um, no yeah, I'm sure we'll meet up again soon cheers Thank you.